So this is a flight into Fukuok. And this video is quite interesting because unlike most uh, approaches which where something is not done correctly when people end up high, uh, this approach is flown uh, way too conservatively. And I will show you what happened. So first let's do a profile calculation. So we're approaching 10,000 feet and we're slowing down. So we will be at 250 knots and we are, almost, we are approaching 40 miles. So 40 times three is flat level 120 and for 250 knots 2000 feet lower so we should be at flight level 100 so it looks like uh, that will work out so let me just skip ahead a little bit um, and oh, one thing I forgot to mention here you can see that the speed break is applied if we go a little bit back right there okay so now um, the speed break is applied here this is not correct you should just let the aircraft slow down. Perhaps the first officer thought, oh, I'm approaching 10,000 feet and then there's the speed restriction here. But we're not there yet. The, we still have 500 feet to go and usually the aircraft does it just fine. And then if you're really closer, maybe like 100 or 200 feet above flat level 100 and the speed is still high, then you can just fly, reduce the vertical speed a little bit and let the aircraft decelerate. But in this case, that speed brake is really not needed. And if you apply the speed brake when you are on profile or below profile, then you will get even lower. So you should not do that. Only use the speed brake when you are high on energy or above profile. Okay, so here comes our altitude uh, check, uh, profile calculation of 40 miles. Okay, you can't see it on the display now, but the, it's, about, it's about here. So 40 miles we, with 250 knots, we should be at 10,000 feet. So that looks correctly. Okay, we're going through a transition here. Okay, let's uh, skip ahead a bit more. I can see that the aircraft starts to slow down to the bottom of the Magenta Econ range. So that's nothing wrong with that per se. Okay, so here we are approaching uh, 30 miles. So let's do an L profile calculation for 30 miles. So 30 times three is 9,000 feet. And it seems we're slowing down to green speed. So we should be at 8,000 feet. Now we're already at 8,000 feet and at 33 miles. So we will definitely be below profile, though the speed is still a little bit above green dot. And talking about green dot. So we started to slow down at green dot at uh, 34 miles. This is too early. You should just keep 250 knots down to 5,000 feet and when passing 5,000 feet you should uh, activate the approach phase and starting to slow down to green knot speed, not at 35 miles, that is too early. Not that, not that it's wrong, but if you operate the aircraft like that, then you will, you might end up uh, late at the, uh, in the end of the day if you do multiple sectors. So, um, so yeah, definitely too early. Okay, so let's skip ahead a bit more. Okay, so here the speed brake is applied. Now, why would that be? So, because we just calculated 30 miles, we should be at 800 feet and we're already at 800 feet. So, we're actually we're below profile and, and now the speed brake is applied again, just like before, when we are below profile, we're getting even lower below profile. Now, I think the first officer did this because he saw the VDEV going lower and lower. But don't forget the VDEV or the yo-yo is just an indication. It's a clue. It's sometimes it's correct and sometimes it's not correct. So what you should do if you see that, you should do your profile calculation and then you can decide for yourself if it's correct or not. Don't forget that uh, there might be altitude constraints. But in this case, we are perfectly fine on profile, so there's really no need for the speed brake. The other thing is then, uh, because he's slowing down to uh, green dot speed, if you apply the speed brake, VLS will go above green dot, usually about 210 knots, sometimes a bit more, depending on your weight and altitude. But um, So now he selects flap 1. Yes, this will get rid of VLS, but a few things with that. If you really believe that you are high on profile, in that case, then yes, you select flap one, but you should select the speed also. So you don't uh, reduce further because you don't want to uh, end up above um, above the profile if you are uh, already um, uh, high. So so that's not correct either. So th th what happens here, that doesn't make sense at all. You're below profile, speed back applied, and now you're going to start to slow down even more. So we're starting to slow down now to um, uh, S speed when we are 30 miles. This is way too early. You should do that at uh, uh, 15 miles, 1.5. So uh, again, uh, when we're passing 5,000 feet, uh, start to slow down from uh, 250 knots to green dot, and then 
uh, we, then we're flying a green dot and we're passing uh, 15 miles and we're gonna ask for flap one and start to slow down to S speed but this is done at 30 miles which is way too early okay so let's skip ahead a bit more okay so now the next thing um, the, the small detail we, we are approaching the localizer here and uh, we are not uh, cleared for the approach but even sometimes the tower says here okay you're clear for the approach you cannot actually arm the approach yet because the procedure you go via Tihan here and then you intercept the localizer from the other side so if you act, uh, arm the approach now it will intercept the localizer too early so it's, you see me pointing at the screen to explaining that so that's just something to be aware of and some airports have that uh, procedure like that okay so let's uh, continue the video and let's see what happens next so here returning to intercept the localizer okay so now flap 2 is selected okay now this is also way too early what you normally should do is um, if you are below kind of low on the profile you should reduce the vertical speed that you are <coughs> stay one dot below the glide slope and then once you're at one dot below the glide slope, increase the vertical speed so to keep it at one dot below the glide slope. And then when you pass 3000 feet, you ask for flap 2. Or you fly level at 3000 feet and then wait for the glide slope to come in. And when it passes one dot, then you ask for flap 2. So, but in this case, he already selects flap 2 here, which is way too early. Now the speed is uh, managed. That's a common um, <coughs> mistake. Uh, but in this case, actually, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, I see it. So it's only a common mistake if you're high on profile that you shouldn't do that. But in this case, we're below profile. So yes, indeed, you can do that. You can manage the speed. But the problem here is because we are so far below profile that the we, we're just getting to uh, we're going way too slow on on the approach. And if there's traffic behind us, then the uh, ATC they might complain. So you, you don't want to slow down too early like that. Okay. So let's skip ahead a bit more. Now there's a message here, more drag. If I just skip back a little bit, so, okay. So here soon you will start to see the message more drag on the, on the PFD and the, the FMS. And uh, so what does the uh, first officer do? He uh, applies the speed brake. Now, again, this is not correct. There you go, there's the speed brake. You should only apply the speed brake when you are either um, well, when you are high on energy, it's as simple as that. If you if you are high on energy, you should apply the speed brake. If you are on profile or below profile, you should not apply the speed brake. Instead, if you want to slow down quicker, you just reduce the vertical speed. But in in this case, uh, uh, we are neither uh, fast nor high. We are we are below profile, and so the speed brake is really not needed. Now, why does the first officer do that? Be just because of the message more drag, and also perhaps he sees that uh, we are above the um, the the VDEF here. So if if I skip back again, again when flap two was selected right there, so perhaps he selected flap two here because he sees oh I'm I'm above the 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 path the VDEF here, and it says here on on the display we're 1,000 feet too high, and and oh I need more drag, that's why I select flap two. I'm not sure what the reason was, but. Um, again, you should do, do the, the calculation yourself. So here, uh, okay, speed brake is selected. There's totally no need for that. And let me see what else happens there. Okay, so we're about to intercept the glide slope, uh, still below. But okay, we're in descent mode. That's one other thing. You really don't want to use descent mode at the last stage of the uh, approach when you're about to intercept the glide slope because you want to control where you're going to intercept the glide slope, which is usually you want to do that at about 3000 feet. Uh, but if you use descent mode, you have no control over the vertical speed. The aircraft might shove the nose down, like in this case. And you don't want that. You're getting way too low if you do that. And sometimes, if you're slightly above the glide slope, oh, and it, you as you say select the descent mode, and if you manage the speed and then select flap two, it will slow down first, and then you end up above the glide slope. So this, you you don't want to use descent mode. It's better to use vertical speed where you control where you put the aircraft on the glide slope. Okay, let's continue. So here we're going all the way below the glide slope. There's Lockstar. 
and so there's fill deflection below the glide slope and there's 3000 feet so you should really uh, press via zero here and fly level and then intercept the glide slope or wait for uh, one dot below the glide slope and then select flap two normally but anyway we have flap two selected already so now he selects a vertical speed okay 500 feet a minute too much it, you will uh, again you're already so much below the glide slope now the reason why you want to intercept the glide slope at 3000 feet and don't fly uh, you, you don't you don't don't want to fly below the glide slope past 3,000 feet. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one reason is uh, wake turbulence. If, you, if there's heavy traffic uh, in front of you, you might end up in their wake turbulence. Uh, another reason is uh, noise abatement. Now, in this case, we're above the ocean, so that doesn't really matter. But uh, aircraft flying low in approach, it's definitely much noisier. And um, also to fly the approach a bit more standard so if you kind of randomly intercept the glide slope at uh, some you know random point every time it becomes hard to manage there, there, there's a number of reasons why you want to intercept the glide slope at uh, 3000 feet instead of uh, lower and one other reason is a workload because if you fly level at 2000 feet everything happens very quickly glide slope comes in of course we are now already configured or not yet fully configured but gear down and flap two so in this case it doesn't matter but if you let's say you're at the green dot speed or flap one and then uh, the glide slope will come in very quick and you have to be very quick to um, uh, configure uh, the other thing is is that uh, the energy management uh, uh, tricks you can well not tricks but um, gates so to say you you use when to lower the gear if you're high on energy for example if you're 3000 feet on the glide slope and you can't select flap 2 because you're too fast you need to lower the gear but if you're flying level and you're way too fast all these these methods they don't work so again multiple reasons why you don't really want to fly level at 2000 feet or or below the glide slope at all after 3000 feet and uh, you can see all the you can read all the the, the exact reasons in in the book practical descent energy management okay so it's um so now we go alt star we fly level uh, we got the gear down flap two, and, and and another reason not to do this is just fuel inefficient, because with the flap two and gear down, it's a bunch of drag. It, the aircraft will add a, a lot of power, and uh, that's just a waste of uh, fuel. So okay, now skip ahead a bit more. There comes glide up star, and um, the video doesn't contain the whole approach. But uh, we, anyway, of course we will be stable. That is not the issue in this case. In this case, it's just that we flew the approach way too conservatively. Now, when I asked the FO later, um, uh, why do you fly the approach like that? Of course, the issue came up with, uh, okay, but it says uh, more drag. So we talked about that. And the other thing is, is nobody really explained like um, in, in, a, in a sort of standardized way how to fly the approach. And, uh, and of course, there is no right or wrong uh, way to do that, to, to fly an approach. But the way I teach that is to always do it in a certain way. I, I basically, I just make my own standard. So uh, people new to the aircraft, they fly the approach the same way every time provided. Of course, that's possible uh, with the procedures, but that makes it a lot more easier to manage. And if you have no uh, structure or method to your uh, approaches, how you fly them in the descent, then it's, it's, you make it yourself much harder. If you're new to the aircraft and you just started flying, you really should have a structured way of doing everything. So uh, I hope you learned something and thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider buying my book, Practical Descent Energy Management. It contains loads of examples of how to manage a descent and approach, and it is the only book available on this subject. There is a paperback and an ebook version available. You can find a link in the description below.